So today I'm going to be filming any disappointing products slash products not really worth the hype kind of video. Um, I hopefully don't want this to become too negative. Um, the products that I've chosen are products that have got a lot of coverage and that a lot of people rave about, um, hence the not really worth the hype title. Um, and obviously that is for a reason, obviously people do like them and they do work for some people. It's not to say that they're awful products and that you should stay away from them by any means. It is just literally a kind of a warning I suppose that maybe you need to do a little bit more research. I obviously didn't and I kind of got sucked into that hype and it's just a kind of it's always that thing that not everything works for everyone. The first thing that I have to talk about is the foundation and it is the L'Oreal True Match Foundation. I have this in the shade D1W1 which is golden ivory um, and I do find that that is a good match for my skin. I do find that I like the finish when it's first applied. It's a very kind of fluidy liquidy foundation as you can probably tell from the state of my lid. It is very very hard to keep clean um, and I do find that once I've initially applied it to the skin it can look quite nice for about 20 minutes or so. I was drawn into this when people were touting it as a dupe for the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation, which I haven't tried, so I'm not obviously gonna compare the two. But I do find that, give it a kind of 20 minutes after I've applied it, it is literally clung to any really dry patches of skin. Um, I have combination skin, but nothing too extreme. Um, but I do find that it really highlights any dryness in my skin and it also makes the oily patches, which are kind of my T-zone and my nose, very, very oily, like shiny, greasy, full on, just not good. I've tried it with loads of different primers, loads of different powders. I've tried it without primer, without powder, and I just can't seem to get on with it. So I do think this is one. Maybe if you have just normal skin, especially, I do think that you might get on with it. Um, and it's not a bad foundation, but for me it just doesn't work. So next up is the concealer, and it is the 17 for Paint. Um, and this is touted as a heavy duty under eye concealer. Um, and I have to say that underneath the eyes it is just a nightmare for me. Um, I don't have particularly dry skin around my eyes, oily skin. My eyes are pretty normal to be honest, and I just find that it looks way, way, way too much. It's incredibly thick and it does tend to look very cakey on the skin. Even if I do apply it over blemishes and stuff, you have to use literally the tiniest, tiniest little amount because if you do use a little bit too much, it can just look like a clay mountain, essentially. So moving on to skincare, and next I have the L'Oreal Paris Skin Perfection 3-in-1 Purifying Micellar Solution. Phew! Um, and this is obviously the micellar water, just like Bioderma. Um, I picked this up way back when Bioderma was really, really difficult to find in the UK and I used to ship it in from eBay, which was fine, but it was just costing me an awful lot of money. So I picked this up as a possible alternative. As you can see, I have used quite a lot of it, so I did give it a fair chance. If you see, micellar waters, micellar solutions are kind of known for being incredibly gentle, incredibly water-like, and I just found that something in this doesn't agree with my skin at all. After I'd used it, my eyes would feel incredibly sore and tender, kind of to touch, which I've never really found with any kind of micellar water before. I did used to use it all over my face, and I did find that it was just particularly around my eyes that I got very sore, which is obviously a particularly sensitive area anyway. Um, but for me, it just, it wasn't worth it, unfortunately. Um, even as like a makeup remover, I didn't find that it did an incredibly good job. The next product is something that I really thought that I got on with to begin with, and it is the Clarins Gentle Exfoliator Brightening Toner. I actually have a tiny, tiny little tube of this because I did go and order the full size after I'd used a little bit of this one, and I have to say that I did pass it on. I have to say that the first couple of times I used this, I did get on with it quite well. Um, but after that, it just kind of stopped doing anything. It just stopped working on my skin. I'd kind of apply it in the evening, wake up the next morning, and my skin would look exactly the same, if not worse. And it just stopped having any effect on like my acne scars and stuff like that. It is quite pricey, so maybe go and pick up a sample, because I know that some people do really, really get on with it, but just for some reason, it doesn't seem to work for me. So moving on to hair, and it does pain me very slightly to say that a Bumble and Bumble product is going to make an appearance in this video. I absolutely love Bumble and Bumble, um, and most of the products that I've tried for them are well worth the money and well worth the hype. But one that I kind of felt fell a bit short for me was the BB, BB Thickening Hairspray. Blah, blah, blah. 
So what you're supposed to do with this one is spray it onto damp hair and it is supposedly meant to thicken up the hair a little bit before you blow dry it and kind of give fine hair an extra lease of life I suppose. Um, I didn't find that it works for me, it just, there's no difference for me between me using it and me not using it. My hair still looks as flat and lifeless as ever. Um, it's quite pricey, again this is only like a small bottle which I think still comes in around a tenner. I used it incredibly quickly because I was trying to make it work and it just didn't work for me. So last up is a product that I know a lot of people really really do love and it is the Philip Kingsley Elasticizer. Um, this is like a pre-shampoo treatment that you pop on 20 minutes, half an hour before you hop into the shower. Um, one of the main issues for me with this is that I just forget every single time um, and by the time I'm in the shower washing my hair I think oh darn I haven't applied anything. Um, but that is not the only reason why this is in this video, believe me. Um, it just doesn't seem to make any difference to my hair whatsoever whether I use this or don't use this, my hair isn't any more shiny, isn't any more manageable, it just feels like a bit of a waste of time if I'm completely honest. My hair is quite damaged but it's really not kind of extreme so I thought that I would be the perfect person to go ahead and use something like this but unfortunately for me it just doesn't seem to make any difference whatsoever um, and again it's quite an expensive product and for me it's just really not worth it. Um, there are a lot of kind of hair masks and stuff like that on the high street obviously that I feel do a better job at giving my hair that intensive treatment um, and yeah it's just a bit of a flop for me unfortunately. So that's all the products that I have to talk about today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys soon.